Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on this CSA NET examination. Today we will discuss about the numerical analysis question asked in question number 331 and 418 which is of the 4.75 and 3 that is a total 7.75 marks will be here. We will try to solve this question in a shortcut to explain. Myself and Dr. Gar, we can see if you have if you are new to my YouTube channel, you can simply follow my YouTube channel Dr. Harishkar where you can find the various videos on the previous year papers and their shortcut tricks. So let's start with this my first uh, in this video. What is the uh, again as I told you very several times you have to read the statement 10 seconds more than your usual time. Your answer will always be in this video. Make sure this is your competition exam not the subjective exam so there is no need to solve each of the problems of this one page or two page are there in the competition examination you have to look at the statements read the statements and the option very carefully so that you will get the right answers within a 15 second trick remember this is not your subjective exam subjective exam you already cover in your in your colleges and the school levels are there now how you can solve them if A is given to be as an inevitable matrix with a positive real entries are here. G is the associated ghost seedal matrix. So first of all, okay, then you have to find the eigens values of the G. So first of all, you have to find the eigenvalues. So remember, you can find the trace of the eigenvalues and you can easily find the determinant of this. It means the determinant of G will be 0, 0, 0 and minus 16 by 9 if any of the options are there. What is the iterative matrix G of the Gauss Seidel? That's a simple here. Okay. Now your target is to construct the G and find the eigenvalues. So what is the uh, what is the D is the diagonal entries, L is a lower matrix. So if you look about this matrix, what is that? This is eight zero nine. This is my D plus L, and U is my upper matrix. That is my here. Fine. Now you can find the value of the G. What is the inverse of here so inverse of this is my 9 what is the determinant is 9 so it will be my 9 upon 9 this is a 0 this is my minus 8 over 9 this is my 1 over 9 multiply by u fine this is my answer now you can find it so it will be minus so first line first column is 0 0 so that's my 0 second is it's a 1 so you can write this as a 1 so it is first number is my 2 second number is my minus 16 over 90 so if you multiply them 0 0 minus of 2 16 by 9 so what is that the sum the, what is that what is that trace of the diagonal values trace will be my 16 upon 9 and the determinant will be my 0 so it means the determinant is not 0 cancel here is the right answer trace is 16 by 9 that's not the answer that's not the answer the right answer is my c is the correct option that's a very simple target about this question. You can see that's a very simple about that. If you if you look about these options, if you look about these uh, questions, then you can get the answer within a reasonable time. Okay. Look about these questions. Again, remember, you have to read the statement uh, in a very smooth manner, 10 seconds more than of your usual time. Be. What is given to you? A second, that is an ordinary differential equation is given to you. A second order Runge Kuta method is given to you. Fine. After that, it's of this form. What is the possible choices of the W1, W2, alpha, beta? There is no need to solve the problem. First of all, you we all know what is the Runge Kuta second order method. Okay, so if I take y, i plus 1, what is that? This is my k1 plus k2 upon 2. That's my here. But here it this is the one of the form but if you write in terms of the journal it will be my w1 k1 plus here or in in more journal form you you have to remember this because the same kind of the question i already explained in in the previous gate examination sorry this is my k1 this is my this is k1 plus 1 over 2 alpha of k2 so we all know what is the k1 k1 is nothing but h f sorry it is h of h is my step size so h f of if this is a form of the tx then i can return like here and k2 is my h times f t plus alpha 
and second is x plus beta of k1 that's that's the simple concept behind that now here now you have to remember this simple shortcut tricks so look at that what is my w2 is 1 over 2 alpha w1 is my here so clearly sees that w1 plus w2 is my 1 and from here the the most necessary condition is alpha must be equal to beta okay so now you can check these three options these four options which one is not satisfied firstly some of them will be one so first two pairs are there clearly see that this option is not satisfied these are satisfied this satisfied this satisfied now look out here w2 w2 is my here is it 1 upon 2 alpha alpha is my here that's satisfied so this is the correct option is there here 3 by 4 is w2 1 over 2 alpha alpha is my 2 over 3 so again this is satisfied and alpha is equal to beta you can say alpha is beta alpha is beta alpha is beta is this satisfied w2 is my 1 alpha is my 1 but you clearly say that this is not equal to 1 over 2 alpha so this option is cancelled so this means the right options are my a and c are my correct options so remember this is the most general form it clearly says that look at that if you simply take alpha is my 1 for example what will happen if alpha is 1 it means this is my half this is my half which is nothing but my here so this is one of the form of there but in journal you have to remember this is the journal form of the uh, range kutta second order method that's a very simple journal form are so whenever they, this the same kind of the question asked in this uh, gate 2022 mathematics paper you can check it and it's a very again the same concept we are using that make sure whenever you are using this uh, range kutta second order there must be condition that alpha and beta must be same so clearly say that what is that this is my what is that this is hf hf is nothing but my k1 t plus of alpha of f so you can write is as a f of this this is w2 of h time this is w2 is my 1 upon 2 alpha w1 is 1 minus 1 upon 2 alpha h of f is nothing but my k1 so you have to think about these options and you get the right answer within a 15 second make sure you have to remember your concepts deeply i hope you can simply learn these concepts very well we will look about this some next lectures on the lpp based questions which are asked in here in our next lectures till then you can simply like share and subscribe my this youtube channel you can share with your friends best of luck students happy learning